What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to write functions as Maclaurin series. So here are some notes on power series and Maclaurin series, and now let's get started. So we'll start off with this question here. We want to find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals sine x. And when you start with this formula, one thing that you want to be able to do is you want to be able to write this formula for the Maclaurin series in expanded form. So what this means is we have the nth derivative at 0 times x to the n over n factorial, and it's the series going from 0 to infinity. So if we expand this, this is going to be f of 0 plus, and then we would have the first derivative at 0 times x to the first over 1 factorial. And then we would have plus the second derivative at 0 times x to the second over 2 factorial. And this pattern continues on and on. And I'll stop here after the third derivative. But this is the idea that we want to come up with the formula for the Maclaurin series for sine x but this is the general formula for any Maclaurin series. So what you do for these questions is you start off, we have f of x equals sine x, and then what we're gonna find is we're just gonna keep finding derivatives until we notice a pattern. So we have the, the first derivative is gonna be cosine, the second derivative is gonna be negative sine x, and then we have the third derivative would be negative cosine x. And then when we take the fourth derivative, and note, anytime you write a derivative after 3, you could start writing numbers. But the fourth derivative is going to bring us back to sine x, which means this pattern is going to repeat every four terms. So now what we do is we evaluate everything at 0. So we have sine of 0 is equal to 0. And if we plug in 0 to the first derivative, that's going to give us 1. If we plug in 0 to the second derivative, that's going to give us 0, because we have negative sine 0. And then the third derivative at 0, negative cosine 0 gives us negative 1. And you see the pattern. It's 0, 1, 0, negative 1. And then it's going to go back to 0 because we're going to do sine of 0 again. So now we just plug into the formula that we expanded above. We have f of x equals, and we have f of 0 is equal to 0. And then we have plus f prime of 0 is equal to 1. So we have 1x over 1 factorial is just equal to 1. And then we have plus f double prime of 0 is equal to 0. So we have 0x squared over 2 factorial, and this is going to wipe out. And then the third derivative at 0 is going to give us minus 1. So instead of plus the third derivative at 0, we're going to replace that with minus 1. So we have minus 1x to the third over 3 factorial. Okay, and I'll write the factorial over here too. So I think we start to see the pattern here that it's only going to be odd terms, and we have positive x to the first, minus x to the third. The next term is going to be plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, and then we're going to have minus x to the seven over 7 factorial. So this is an alternating series. So now when you get to this step, you want to clean this series up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write this. This is going to be x, and then we're going to have minus x to the third over 3 factorial. And we're going to ignore all the stuff that canceled. So we have plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, and then we have minus x to the seven over 7 factorial, and this pattern is going to continue on and on. But now what we want to do, we're going to write this in series form, and this is going to be the series at, uh, from n equals 0 to infinity, and now we just have to think carefully here. What we have is we have only odd powers of x, so what we could do is we could say x to the 2m plus 1, and notice that the factorial on bottom matches the power of x. So that means if my power is 2m plus 1, my factorial on bottom is going to be 2m plus 1 factorial. But then one detail we have to make sure that we account for is that this series alternates, which means it's going to need a negative 1 to the n power. And one thing you want to be careful with is notice that the first term starts out positive. So if I plug in n equals 0 first, we have negative 1 to the 0, which is going to give us 1, which is the matching coefficient here. So now we could say this is the Maclaurin series for sine x. Now one other thing that's worth looking at here is some concepts. Why doesn't f of x equals x to the one-third have a Maclaurin series? Well, if we think about what we said before, f of x is equal to f of 0 plus, then we had f prime of 0 x to the first over 1 factorial, and then we had plus f double prime of 0 x to the second over 2 factorial, and so on. This just continued. So what we could do to answer this question is we could just start to explore. We have f of x equals x to the one-third, but now the first derivative 
would be one third x and then when we subtract one we'll have negative two thirds and if we write this a different way this is going to be one over three x to the two thirds like this and then if I found the second derivative see this would come down and make uh, would make negative two times one would make negative two over three times three is nine and we'd have x to the and then we would have negative five thirds like this which would be negative two over nine x to the five thirds but now let's see what happens here if we plug in zero to the function f of zero is equal to zero because the cube root of zero is zero however f prime of zero is undefined reason being we would have division by zero here in the denominator and we could also see that f double prime of zero is undefined and one thing to note is that now as we keep taking more and more derivatives we're going to have x in the denominator so what this means is that f prime, f double prime, f triple prime, and so on at zero are all undefined, which means that we can't have a Maclaurin series because each of the coefficients are going to be undefined after f of zero. So once again, when we look at the general formula for a Maclaurin series, the nth derivative at zero is going to be undefined for all integers n greater than or equal to one. Like we saw here, the first, second, third, and so on derivatives are all undefined at zero. So now we'll look at an example where the pattern is a little bit tricky to spot. So we have f of x equals, and we're writing our formula for a Maclaurin series. And once again, just preference, but I like to write out the expanded form here when I'm writing an actual formula for a Maclaurin series. We have f double prime of zero, x to the second over two factorial now, and this continues. We have the third derivative at zero, x to the third over three factorial, and this is gonna go on and on. So now what we do is we have f of x equals, we have natural log of one plus x, and the first derivative is gonna be one over one plus x, which we could also call this one plus x to the negative one power, okay? And I'm writing it like this because when we find the second derivative, it's gonna be easier to just do the power rule on this. Technically, we have to do the chain rule, but the derivative of the inside is one. So now we could just say negative one plus x to the negative two, which is the same thing as negative one over one plus x squared. And we'll put this in parentheses. And then the third derivative of our function, we're gonna use this form, negative two times the negative in front makes it two. We have one plus x to the negative three like this, which is the same thing as two over one plus x to the third power. And if we wanna see one more derivative, just to see if we could spot a pattern here, what we have is now we have negative three times two, which is gonna give us negative six, one plus x to the negative four. And now we have, once again, negative six over one plus x to the fourth power. So now we just plug in and spot the pattern. We have f of x equals f of zero. Well, if we plug in here f of zero, that gives us natural log of one plus zero, which is natural log of one, and that's equal to zero. So this starts out with a zero. Then we have plus, and f prime of zero is the same thing as one over one plus zero, which is gonna be equal to one. So we have plus, and in our formula here, our formula here, we have f prime of zero, so we have one times x, and then we have plus, and coming up here, the second derivative at zero, if we plug in, we're gonna have negative one over one plus zero gives us one squared like this. So this will make negative one. So we have plus negative x squared over two factorial. And then next up, we have plus the third derivative at zero, we could find here is gonna give us two over one to the third power, which is equal to two, so we have plus, and now we have two x to the third over three factorial. And then we can see the pattern here. After the zero plus, it's one x, and then we have minus, then we have plus, and now it's gonna go back to minus, but we'll plug in just to be sure. And this is gonna give us negative six over one to the fourth, which is gonna give us negative six. So now notice what we have, we have minus six, and then it'll be x to the fourth, over four factorial. And this is gonna continue on and on. But now we just have to try to spot a pattern. We have f of x equals, and if we simplify this, this is x minus x squared over two factorial plus, and now what we have is we have two x to the third 
over three times, I remember three factorial, if I write that on the side, is three times two times one, which is equal to six. So I have this over six minus six x to the fourth over four factorial is equal to three factorial times four. So this would be equal to four times three times two times one, or four times three factorial, which would give us 24. So we would have over 24 like this, and this continues on and on. But watch what happens when we simplify. This is gonna give us x minus x squared over two factorial is equal to two. And then we have plus, this is gonna to simplify to one third. We have plus x to the third over three. And we have minus x to the fourth over four when this simplifies. So the pattern may be obvious here that next up we would have plus x to the fifth over five minus x to the sixth over six. And this pattern is gonna continue on and on. Now there's not one correct way to write our final series, but when I'm writing out my series, we could start this at a few places. And notice I'm starting at x to the first power. So maybe this one I wanna start at n equals one. And that would give us x to the n over n, because if you notice here, the power of x matches the denominator. So I would have x to the n over n, and we're starting at x to the first. However, we have to account for the fact that this series is alternating. And if I were to write it like this, this would be a little bit sloppy. And my thought process, why is that sloppy? Well, if we looked at the first term at n equals one, if I had at n equals one, that would give us negative one to the first power, which would start off with a negative in front, not a positive. So that's not gonna be any good here. So to fix that, we just throw in a plus one here. Because now when we have negative one to the n plus one, that would give us negative one to the one plus one first, which would give us negative one squared which is positive one, and this thing starts out positive. So this is our McLaurin series for natural log of one plus x.